One of the most powerful Republicans at the state capitol, who is also running for Congress, was arrested for drunk driving and possessing a gun while intoxicated in 2022. The Denver Post first reported, and we have now confirmed, the state patrol arrested House Minority Leader Mike Lynch. The state trooper said he feared for his safety during the traffic stop. It happened back in September of 2022. The CSP report says Lynch was driving on I-25 in Larimer County when the trooper pulled him over. Lynch told the trooper that he was coming from a fundraiser in Fort Collins. The trooper said Lynch appeared drunk and was carrying a pocket knife and a gun. The trooper said Lynch pulled the gun out of his pocket. The trooper had to pin it against his leg and wasn't sure if Lynch purposely pulled it out or was too drunk to know what he was doing. The trooper told Lynch that people get shot that way. The report goes on to say the portable breath test was 0.165, more than twice the state's legal limit. We've reached out to Lynch for a comment or an interview and are waiting to hear back. He's running in a crowded Congressional District 4 race, as many are trying to replace Republican Congressman Ken Buck. Of course, that's now the same district that Lauren Boebert has switched to as well. The cold weather here in Colorado, among other things, is delaying the demolition of the Return to Nature funeral home, the one in Penrose. That, of course, is the one where nearly 200 bodies were found improperly stored. The APA was originally supposed to start that process today, but it's unclear when the work will start now. When it does happen, the demolition is scheduled to last about 10 days. Excavators will break up the building from the top down. Once the building and concrete foundation have been removed, the EPA says they will also scrape some of the soil for disposal. The EPA says they will post a new start date once they know it. Today, one of the owners of that funeral home, Carrie Halford, appeared in court for a preliminary hearing. Both Halford and her husband, John, are facing over 200 felony charges. All right, let's get to the roads and update this afternoon after days of being closed. Loveland Pass did finally reopen today. CDOT reminds you that passenger traction laws and commercial chain laws are still in place. Of course, then there's the story of Berthoud Pass, and that remains closed for a fourth day. We're up there now. CDOT says they hope to open it a little bit later, but weather is making it difficult. Again, we'll be joining our Corey Reppenhagen from the high country. He'll have the latest on the Bertha Pass situation. We'll do that coming up at about 430. Let's take a live look closer to the metro area. The sun is shining. It was a pretty nice day out there, getting into the 40s, and it's just messy, dirty, melty. That's what you expect, right, Lauren? <laughs> That's exactly what you expect after some snow and all across Colorado we've been seeing kind of two different stories warming on the east half and we're still seeing that heavy snow off to the west and just a reminder just because areas like Loveland Pass are reopening does not mean that they are available to be used because we do still have several winter weather alerts that will be in effect all the way through Friday morning. Now some of these will be allowed to expire Thursday evening but all in all you want to stay off of these roadways until maybe mid Midday Friday, and that's because we're still expecting up to a feet or, or up to a foot or more of snow. We're also going to see those winds gusting up to around 65 miles per hour. And as we know, that creates that blowing snow, limited visibility, very hazardous travel. Outside of the roadways, you also want to stay out of those backcountry areas because we do still have some avalanche warnings in effect through Thursday. High levels of danger here, four out of five. And if that's not enough for you, we do have flash flood watches in effect through Saturday. This is going to be your Central River Basin areas where you want to watch for some flash flood possibilities due to ice jams out there that could cause that rapidly rising water. But all in all, we're going to continue to monitor our HD Doppler radar for all of the heavy snow and strong winds to the west. We'll see some clearing across the Front Range and Eastern Plains as these temperatures continue to rebound towards seasonal numbers. I'll have details on all of this in your week ahead, just ahead. Thanks, Lauren. The city is once again extending cold weather shelters. Overnight shelters will be available through Saturday morning. Buses will transport people from the St. Francis Center on Curtis Street to the shelters. A rodeo cowboy is recovering from serious injuries after a dangerous fall on Monday at the National Western Stock Show. Of course, those in the world of rodeo as well as stock show organizers know it can happen. They have to be prepared. Our Janelle Finch is live at the Denver Coliseum to tell us uh, how that rider is doing as far as recovery. Hi, Janelle. Tom and Kim, I spoke to that young rider's mother today who tells me her son, Austin Broderson, is working through some serious injuries, including internal bleeding and damages to his uh, artery, to his hip and to his spine. But despite all of that, she also says that he's on his road to recovery. And for him, that road began here at the Western Stock Show with the medical team. 
Getting roped into the action of the National Western Stock Show is easy. But not every ride goes the way those saddling up hope. And when that happens... Oh, just taping his ankles, it's one of our bullfighters. Chad Smith gets busy. Bicep still intact? Yeah, no, she's all good. As an athletic trainer at the Stock Show, Smith has seen it all. Bumps and bruises, muscle tears, strains, a little bit of everything, so... Everything even the injuries that call for a more serious response. There's always that inherent risk with rodeo that they, you know, every time somebody, they open that shoot gate, something bad can happen. Monday, something bad happened. Canadian college rodeo athlete Austin Broderson fell off his horse during the bareback riding competition. You could tell that was going to be something that was going to need attention. He was taken to the hospital where his family says he's recovering from a damaged left artery, fractured hip, loss of muscle feeling, and several bruises. His mom watched the accident live from Canada. She got on the road to Denver right away and says she's grateful for the people who took care of Austin during her 10 hour drive and the crew in the rodeo's medical room where her son is still top of mind. Just got off the phone with his dad maybe 30 minutes ago, just checking in to see how he's doing and offer to help in any way that we can. Smith says work in the medical room supports all athletes looking to get to their next ride. So it's very rewarding. I mean, that's why we're here is to help people. So it doesn't matter whether it's something minor or something very serious. We're still going to do everything we can to help that athlete out. Austin is a sophomore at Casper College in Wyoming and is a part of the rodeo team. I spoke with his head coach today who tells me he's a great young rider with a lot of potential. The rodeo community there as well as the traveling rodeo community here are pouring out love, prayers and hope for Austin as his family as he works to get better. It is Absolutely. A, it's a rugged life. Yeah, it is. We, you know, we hear about injuries sure. many times at the National Western, but uh, also if you just go there and spend time watching them do what they do, they are true athletes, Janelle. They are really true athletes. Yeah, it absolutely takes a lot of professionalism to do what they do, and truly, truly, it, it is incredible to, to watch them get on those, those animals and, and take charge. Yeah. And good to see the, the medical team there as well for yep. them. All right, Janelle, thanks. Of course, Nine News is a media partner of the Stock Show. You can find more extended coverage on the Nine News app, of course. The cost of stamps and other USPS mailing services will increase this weekend. The Postal Service says price adjustments are needed to achieve its Delivering for America 10-year plan. Starting Sunday, you will see an increase of about 2%. That impacts stamps, postcards, and the price to send priority and express mail. A San Francisco-based electric RV maker with an office in Boulder is committing to do more work in Colorado. The company Lightship is offering a production facility opening one in Broomfield, where it's planning to build the first commercial versions of its solar-powered electric trailer. Our partners at the Denver Business Journal report that Lightship recently bought, brought in $34 million in funding to back that facility. Lightship expects to start work in Broomfield next month. Turning to politics, tomorrow's Republican presidential debate in New Hampshire now canceled. Nikki Haley said she wouldn't take part unless former President Trump did so. And that left Ron DeSantis as the only candidate left in the debate lineup. With just one candidate there to debate, ABC said they'll cancel instead. So far, the run-up to New Hampshire, though, looking very similar to what we saw as we headed into Iowa. Candidates are on the ground campaigning for second place as the presumptive front runner spent his day in court. NBC's Tracy Wilkins has more. Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis are on the trail in New Hampshire while Donald Trump began his morning in a New York courtroom again. Writer E. Jean Carroll took the stand today at her second civil trial against the former president. This time, she's seeking damages for defamation, which Trump denies. Last year, he was found liable for sexually abusing Carroll in the 90s and for defaming her while he was president. Today in court, the judge threatened to throw Trump out for making gestures and comments showing his disagreement with Carroll's testimony. Trump is also focusing his attacks on his Republican rivals. Last night at a New Hampshire rally, the former president had words for Haley. Some polls show her inching closer to Trump's dominating lead. I do want to talk about Nikki because this perception that she's gone up, but I worked with her for a long time, and she was okay. Well, I will tell you that. She's not tough enough. Despite finishing third, Haley says she's happy with her showing in Iowa and is moving forward. We felt good coming out of Iowa. We're going to feel even stronger coming out of New Hampshire. 
going into South Carolina. DeSantis, who came in second in Iowa, held two events today in New Hampshire, where he's polling third. Today, he attacked Haley's ability to beat Trump. She was relying on was getting Democrats to come vote for her. That obviously is not somebody that's going to be able to win a Republican nomination, much less, you know, against Donald Trump's. While the Democratic Party decided not to participate in Iowa's caucuses or New Hampshire's primary, President Biden released a video on social media reminding voters that he's done what the Republican candidates have not so far. I'm still the only person to ever beat Donald Trump, and I'm looking forward to do it again for the good of this country. In Washington, Tracy Wilkins, NBC News.